people not be smart, you know. This speech where we say, Shetima make so don't finally put Shetima Tinubu for double wahala. No be smart, you know. My people we don't say to <laughs> everywhere na bas boost. No be smart, you know. Shetima come outside to come deliver the speech. My people, instead of me, Shetima continue to deliver his speech. Shetima thought say he one decided to throw stone for everywhere so that the stone go meet who he won't meet. My people, now Nigeria people thought say. This one not be matter of to the trust stone or to the shake person or to the mock person. This one a matter of action because Nigeria people, many things they happen to Nigeria. The thing where they happen to Nigeria right now, not be to the shade or to the mock one person. My people make una go here. The speech of Shetima, where we say, draw a lot of people attention. Where we say, people they talk, say, ah, what the other party they, they do for inside this speech now. My people make una go watch video. Today we gather to honor Nigeria's journey to redefine its destiny. Today we stand on the precipice of history to reflect upon a nation that has defied the predictions of doomsayers, a nation that has become the metaphor of resilience. Over the past 63 years, we have not only survived, but thrived because of our collective resolve our commitment to progress, and the enduring spirit of unity that binds us together from Abba down through to Ogbomosho, to Zalia, to Burning Kebbi, despite the conspiracies of minor vested interests. While this anniversary offers us another opportunity to acknowledge the cross regional bonds that kept us standing as Africa's most populous nation and largest economy, we are here to remind ourselves that the future we promise Nigerians isn't an empty performance for electoral papers. You can't renew the hope of the nation unless you are prepared to pursue bold reforms. And President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has undertaken to build a country while the economic independence of each citizen is guaranteed, while none of us has to depend on unspecified handouts to earn a living. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, our history, like that of every nation, isn't just a record of surviving attacks on our sovereign integrity and social welfare. Our history underscores the commonality of our shared humanity. The most recent memory, the COVID-19 pandemic, for instance, brought this starkly to the fore. The tragedy reminded us that viruses do not discriminate based on ethnicity or religion, and that our strength as a nation is driven by our collective path in the ideal that defines us and the moral character of our leaders. Your Excellencies, Ladies and gentlemen, I love Nigeria. I believe in the Nigeria project. Not because of my best interest. I am 57 years old. As far as UNDP, the average age of a born man is 47. So I'm well past my prime. Certainly not because of my family. I have only a wife and three kids. I believe in Nigeria because if Nigeria works, the black man works. The last election was probably one of the most divisive elections in the contemporary annals of Nigerian history. Ethno-religious and regional port lines were deliberately manipulated for political ends. But it is pertinent to mention, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, that the most northern of northern states is Sokoto. The Nigerian candidate lost by a few thousand votes to the regional candidate in Sokoto. The most Christian of northern states 
is Benue. Benue is 90% Christian. And the Nigerian candidate defeated the religious candidate in Benue State. Courtesy of the Prince of Wanune, the Mercurial George Akume and his team. The most southern of southern states, the most southern of south south states is Rivers. Again, the Nigerian candidate defeated the religious candidate in Rivers State. What is it of the enigmatic Mercurial Nyesom Ezenwawike? He's unavoidably absent. He had to go around to attend to some functions. And the Nigerian political climb is populated by careful snails who do not want to upset the apple cart. In the First and Second Republics, we have the Adegoki Adelabus, the Bosari Adelakuns, the Kingsley Mbadwes, the Sambakwes, the Abubakar Rimis, the Sabo Bakinzuos, the Aminu Kanos, the Abdul Kadir Balarebe Musas, the Bala Usmans. But now, the most colorful character is, is probably we some near some wiki. Unfortunately, his coming to Abuja has robbed out of his theatrics. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the future of a great nation is not determined by the occurrence of a socio-economic challenge. The future of every nation rests on the intention, sincerity, and innovative ideas of its leaders and their commitment to implementing them. This is why President Bola Tinubu's aid for an agenda remains an oasis in a scorching sun. We cannot renew the hope of the nation unless we deliver on our promise to drive post security and eradicate poverty. We cannot foster economic growth and nurture job creation unless we facilitate access to capital, enhance national security, and optimize the business environment for our enterprises. We are going to uphold the rule of law and fight corruption to design the Nigeria of our dream. We can't achieve any of these unless each citizen remains a strategic partner in pursuit of our ultimate national interest. At 63, we recognize that what has sustained us and propelled us forward is our collective belief that overcoming the challenges we have inherited necessitates sacrifices especially from us, the leaders. We are driven by the realization that these sacrifices are not for naught. They are investments in a brighter future. Investments that will redeem the future, the fortune of our great generation and guarantee the well-being of generations to come. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the present administration also recognizes that the sacrifices made by each Nigerian will never be in vain. Such solidarity with our economic revival strategy, from the bustling streets of Lagos to the serene landscape of Inugu, has inspired our focus on diverse sectors, from agriculture to digital technology, from healthcare to education. We knew from the starting point of this race to serve the people that the track will not be without its holes and ponds. We knew that challenges will arise and obstacles will test our resolve. But as our history has shown, Nigerians are too ambitious to be broken by a temporary setback. We are going to emerge from this space of our reform stronger. Each of us will renew hope as we honor the labor of our heroes past. As we reflect on the values and principles that have brought us this far, as we strive to excel in all that we do, and as we work together towards a future where opportunity knows no bounds, let's remember that our most potent weapon is the overriding resolve of the majority to choose unity over chaos and democracy over anarchy. Thank you, and happy independence. Thank you.